Welcome back everybody to another scan time video. This week we're going to be having a look at function blocks inside of the Omron PLC using CX Programmer. This week we're going to be using the CJ PLC like we did a couple of weeks ago. Now apologies for no video last week, it was Easter Monday last week and we ran training courses from the Tuesday to Friday. Usually I record on the Friday and they upload the videos on the Friday and I was busy training that day so sorry about that one. Hopefully we can make it up for you this week. As I mentioned we're going to be having a look at function blocks inside of the Omron PLC. We're going to be having a look at how to create a basic function block, download it to the PLC program and test it out and see what it looks like inside of our PLC when it's running. Before we get started, what I'd like you to do is give the video a like and comment below what you'd like to see next time. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date with more new videos. Now, let's get into it. So the big benefit of using function blocks in the PLC program is the fact that in the gates, needing to copy and paste code over and over again when we need to use it more than once. Let's take, for example, a conveyor system. We have a conveyor system which consists of 15 conveyors. The control routines to control one conveyor is, let's say, 50 networks. If I didn't use function blocks, what we would do is we would take that code that we used to control one conveyor, copy it, and then paste it another 14 times for the other 14 conveyors. You can then imagine the size of your program when you're actually looking at that, when it's just lines and lines of ladder. Instead, what we could do is take that code, put it inside of a function block, and then use that function block 15 times. So then when you open up the program, you're only seeing 15 networks. Not only that, but the code is exactly the same. So if one works, the others will work as well. The only difference will be the actual signaling going to the conveyor and from the conveyor. If we need to make a change, it updates for all of the conveyors as well on our system too. So it's very time saving and it's very convenient and efficient for the programmer and also the engineers looking at our programs too. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at function blocks inside a CX programmer. I've got myself a project here which is the CJ1M and it's the CPU12 version. I've created my IO table already and you'll see where we have our programs just below that you'll actually see function blocks there. What we're going to do is we're going to create just a very basic function block. We turn on a signal going into the function block that then turns on an output signal coming from the function block and what we'll also do is we'll update a register inside of our program too so that it increases by one on every scan that that button is pressed down for. So we're going to do that and what we're going to do is we're going to do it multiple times. So if I was to design the program inside of my main program, what I would do is I would grab my contact and what we'll do is we'll tie it to our input which would be 0.00, .00 and I'll just leave it at that. I would then take it to an output coil and let's call that 1.00 for my first output and then what I would do is we would branch down and I want to update a register on every scan that that button is pressed for. So what we'll then do is we'll grab the instruction. I'll type in here plus plus, which is our increment instruction inside of the CJPLC and D zero, for example, and then say OK to that and say OK to that. So what will happen here is when I press my input, the output will turn on and the register D0 will then increment on every scan that that button is pressed down for. So if I connect that to the PLC, say yes to that, and then I download that to our PLC. I'll download the IO table as well because it's the first time I'm downloading to this PLC. Just say yes to that, stop the PLC, then go into program mode. When I press that button, Q1.0 will turn on and our D0 will begin to increment. So let's go online there and let's just force on that input. And there we go, we can see that data register now incrementing. If I force it and cancel, you can now see, there we go, we've stopped there. That's our design written. Now, if I wanted to do that 10 times in our program, what we would do is we would copy this code, paste it, 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 so on and so on. And then what we would do is we would go through all of this, changing all of the addressing. And you would do it for all of these networks down here. And as you can see, the code just, first of all, looks exactly the same because it is the same code. But not only that, it looks a bit more convoluted, looks a bit more complex than it actually needs to be. Instead of copying and pasting code, because just think this is just one network. Imagine your design was 20, 30, 40 networks long. It would look a lot more complex than just this. So instead of doing this, what we can do is we can create a function block. 
And what we can do is we can take this design here and put it inside of a function block. So I'm just going to delete these extra networks that I've got. And I'm just going to copy this network here. I'm going to right click where we have function blocks and just say insert new function block and ladder. You'll see a new function block appear. I'll just rename this test. And there we go. If I just double click that function block and open it up, you can see it looks very similar to my program. However, I've got this internal addressing window highlighted at the top, very similar to the Siemens PLCs. If I just paste my code inside of here, what you'll notice is red markings. These red markings are there because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use physical inputs and outputs inside of a function block. The problem with this is because I can use that function block multiple times, I would then be duplicating the dressing via the function block itself. So what we do is we use this internal addressing area located at the top of the function block to replace this addressing over here. You'll notice some tabs across the top we've got here, internals. Internals are signals that can be read or written to, contacts or coils with inside of the program. And these consist inside of the block and inside of the block only, nowhere else. So you won't be using these anywhere else inside of the main program. You've got inputs and inputs should be read only signals. So contacts inside of this program that are being sent from our main program into the function block. And then we've got outputs over here. Outputs are write only signals or should be write only signals that are used as coils inside of our program and they are sent into our main program. You've also got this tab here, which is externals. And in the externals are the general bit addressing that is already being created by the PLC. So your clock pulses will be in here. You'll also have things like your always on and your always off. You'll also have things like your first cycle flag, comparator flags, all these different sorts of bit logic instructions that have been already designed by the PLC. Not interested in those just yet. So looking at this we've got here an input signal or our i0.0 .0, and this is going to be coming in from the main program so when we press i0.0 .0, we want this contact to turn on so it's going to be coming in from the main program it's only being used as a contact so this is going to be an input what i'm going to do is i'm just going to right click here insert variable it's then going to give me a new variable dialog window and I'll just give it a generalized name. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to call this like start stop valve start stop pump etc because this could be generalized and used for multiple different applications. So I'm just going to call this start. I'm going to leave it as a boolean because that's what it is is just on or off and I'm going to leave it as an input. The initial value is just going to be set to false so when we first start up the PLC this will be off and retain is going to be unchecked as well. So it's not going to retain its value. I'm then just going to say OK to that. And then where we see our 0.00, .00 what I'm going to do is change this to start. And as you can see, it's already found it. If I say OK to that, you can now see there's our blue indicator, meaning it's been accepted. I then need to turn on an output signal, which is going to turn on our queue on the outside world. So this is going to be going out of our function block into our main program. So I'm going to go to my output tab over here, right click, insert new variable, and I'm going to call this, for example, output enable. Again, it's going to be a Boolean. It's going to be an output signal. It's going to be false and non-retentive. Say OK to that. What I also want to do is I want to increment the value inside of a data register. So I want to change the value that I've got inside of here. So I'm going to create another output and I'm going to call this output data. And this one is going to be a variable, a value. So I'm going to change this to an integer and it's going to be an output with the initial value this time of zero, non-retentive either. And I'm just going to say OK to that. So now if I change this here to output enable, and if I change my increment, instead of doing plus plus D zero, I'm gonna go plus plus data and then say, okay to that. And that is now my function block designed. So now when I go back to my main program, section one, I can then just delete this network and you'll see next to my instruction window, I've got another instruction, which is new function block call. The short key for that is F. So if I just press on new function block call and I just select inside of my network, it's going to ask us for the function block definition. At the moment, there's only one function block in my program, so I can only select test. But if there was more, I could drop this down and select that other function block from there. 
you'll notice it's asking you for an instance, a function block instance. Think of this like an instance data block inside of a Siemens PLC. Inside a Siemens PLC, whenever you add function blocks to the program, it asks you for a data block. This is effectively the memory area for that function block. This allows the PLC to create a memory structure for that function block, store information in there, and then pull information from there on every scan of the PLC. This allows us to uh, bypass the duplication problems that would cause if we just use the same function block over and over again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna call this test one, for example, and then just say okay to that. And there's my function block there. Now you'll notice I've got these little uh, red errors on this network and this is because this is uncompleted at the moment. So where we see our enable flag, what I want to do is I want to have this enabled at all times. If I want to do enable this under a certain condition, I can put another condition there. But because I want this enabled at all times, I'm just gonna put a normally open contact in. I'm gonna tie that to CF113, which is my always on flag. So this is always gonna be scanned on every scan. Now what I want to do is I want to tie an input signal to my start signal. Now to do this, I could use another contact or I could use this new function block parameter icon. And what this allows me to do is if I select this, I can then click on the leg where the start is and I can add in a new parameter. So for example, 0.00. .00. And there it is there. That 0.00, .00 is now tied to my start. What I can do is I can then do the same for our output enable. And I want to tie this to 1.00. .00. Where my data is, I want to tie this to D0. And that is now my function block completed. I don't need to address this ENO if I don't want to. This ENO, think of it like a short. Here's my EN and there's my ENO, my enable output. If the EN is on, the ENO is also on. So if I wanted to, I could tie a coil to that and that coil would be on at all times because it's always on. What I can now do is I can now copy this code and paste it again. And now I've got to change our instance. So instead of using test one, I'll edit the block and I'll change this to test two. Where I've got 0.00, .00 I'll change that to 0.01. .01. Where I've got 1.100, .00, I'll change that to 1.01. .01. And where I've got D0, I'll change that to D2. And there's that block created. I can then copy and paste the code. Again, edit the block, change that to test 3. Change this to 0.02. .00. Change this to 1.02. .00. And then change this D register to D4, for example. And then we can go through and design the rest of the program like that. As I mentioned, this design is very basic. It's just one contact, one coil, one instruction. But you can imagine if you had a block of 20 networks, you place it inside of a function block. Now all you have to do is simply just wire up the function block. Think of these function blocks like miniature PLCs inside of your PLC with the code already designed. All you need to do is wire up the inputs, wire up the outputs, and there it is sorted for you. So now if I save my work here, and I'll just call this test, say yes to that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to connect to the PLC, and then what we'll do is we'll download and test it. Let's have a go at doing that. Okay, so now that that's downloaded, You'll see here, these blocks are being executed on every scan. Currently though, nothing's happening because our start signals are not enabled. Now if I just activate one start signal, so let's just say I force this start signal on, only this block will then become activated. And if I cancel that force, there we go. So we saw that the output Q1.0 turned on and there are D register is. Our D register is on at the moment and it went to 5995. The other blocks are untouched because they are using different addressing. So if I then activate this one and force this one on, I can also force on my other input over here and have them both running. And then what I can do is I can then force them and cancel all forces and we can see different values inside of these registers. They're all running the same code, but they're all sending signals to different outputs, different data registers inside of our program. 
Now what I can also do is I can also jump inside of a program and I can view that code working. So for example, if I wanted to view the code working inside of network one, let's just force this on and let's have this run in the background. What I can do is I can open the block by double clicking it and we can see that current block of code running. If I go back to section one and then I open up test two here, we'll see everything off inside of there because this is looking at test two, not test one. And we can see this by the instance name at the top, instance name test two. We're not inside of instance test one. So if I go back to section one and I go back to test one, there we go, we can see the code working there. Go back to section one. If I just cancel forces and then I go and trigger test three. Now, if I go into section one, I won't see it running because I'm in section one and I'm in test one, sorry, not in test three. So if I open up test three, there we go, we can see that block of code running. So this allows us to have one universal design used multiple times. And as I mentioned, if the design works, then we can roll this out to the other pieces of equipment on the shop floor and they'll work in the exact same method. If all of a sudden one stops working properly, that then highlights more towards the hardware failure and not a software failure because all of the other ones are working. So this is just a brief introduction to function blocks inside of the CJPLC inside a CX programmer. It's a really useful tool when designing programs and also when just fault finding and modifying programs as well because we're just working inside of one block. I hope you've enjoyed this video guys, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time.